tell him we got a nine o'clock appointment with Miss uh, with Mike Ferguson. Yo. 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 Now go ahead and sit down for me, would you, ma'am? Hi, how are you today? Good, how are you? Ms. Ferguson? Good. All right, my name is Levi Jonathan. Levi Jonathan, okay. You um, got a place we can sit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Johnson on the phone. I was trying to look through emails and online, and I yeah. I had to take some pictures of the article, so okay. let me show you. Here. So you going elsewhere? Yes, sir. Where are you headed? Polk State. Oh, yeah? College in Winter Haven? Yes, sir. All right. You live pretty close to there. What's the, what's the occupation over there? Kind of the same thing. Um, media relations, and I'll also do the athletic portion. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah so, you know, to save us time, I guess, um, <coughs> You know, basically, um, there was an article that was put out about me. Okay. Um, you were listed as, as a spokesperson for Haines City. Um, it was to do with the situation at Walmart. Okay. And right here in Haines City. Um, this was July 1st, 2020. July 1st, 2020. Okay. And um, are you familiar with this case? Can you recall your memory, perhaps? I mean, what was what was the it about? I may. Yeah. Well, I'm charged with the voyeurism on a nine-year-old. I do remember this. Okay. And um, you know, I um, I, I um, I've got been able to do some work on my own. You know, since I fired my attorney back in um, August or July, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there was never an accusation against me. Um, that, thank you. Can you go ahead and plug that in for me? Are, are you saying prior to this or during this? What, what do you mean there was never an accusation? I'm saying at this time there was never an accusation. <clears throat> I can provide you with the material that I have that was kept from me for quite some time. Um, but basically, the police report states, you know, here's the police report. The police report states, I've got another copy somewhere that has the underlying, but you can see it all, it's like, Thank you, and I'm glad I brought that, because I was wondering. Yeah. So if you read down towards, the th and on the fourth paragraph, it says, um, 
that uh, she stated she never saw him film up her daughter's dress, but did clearly observe him filming up another girl's skirt. It's in italics. <clears throat> I had a lawyer tell me that's the basis for the charge. I guess it would make sense. I don't think they would get a warrant to search my wife and her house without somebody accusing me of something. Um, but the the problem is like is that that uh, that accusation just never happened. Um, this 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 lady um, describes a girl <coughs> that she says is nine, no, <coughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. When I asked her in the last deposition, the first thing she told me was teenager. Um, it's not her daughter, and I'm, I'm st almost two years later, I'm still trying to figure out where her daughter comes in to the picture. But I can show you right now uh, the video of the bread aisle. It took me well over a year to t obtain this. There I am. Okay. This, is when the alleged this is it. This is when the alleged um, offense occurred. Well, you can't tell anything um, because it's, uh, first of all, not the original Walmart um, camera, I believe. I believe that theirs is more high definition. Okay. And it's also not the angle that's directly in view of the incident. Um, I can give you that much from it. But if you see a girl in there in a dress, would you please point her out to me? Is that what it says in the report? Uh, it, it says that, that I'm being charged with filming uh, Kendria Hill's daughter, okay. essentially. Uh, but the thing is, is that it doesn't provide any evidence and it doesn't provide any accusation. Kendria Hill accused me of filming another girl and she went and got the Walmart employee and if you kind of watch, I'm still right here. Okay. I just squatted there. And there's a girl on the left that fits the description of what Kendria Hill says. All right. I stopped him when I realized he had a camera on a notepad. He was bent down in a frog position recording another young female. He looked like nine. No, she was like 10, 11. She had gray leggings on and was kind of tight fitted. You could see, you know, her butt. You could see, like, you know, her frame of her. And I'm like, he's recording her. This is what she's describing. See that girl walking right there? Okay. She's got gray um, leggings on. Curly hair. She describes her as Hispanic. And with her old Spanish mom. So there I, there I am. And there's the Walmart employees. That's the girl. That's her mom. Anyway, that's the video um, of the of the of the scene. Okay. Did you see a girl in a dress? I did not. But I mean. And um, and a second deposition I gave was Sharon Hayes, which was the. Walmart employee that was following me. Mm -hmm. She states that she didn't see this video. She saw another video. Okay. Um, that there's another camera in the meat aisle facing directly on the scene. So I brought that with me here. Uh, but I did put the last motion that I had put in was for sanctions. It has um, plenty of um, exhibits to go with it. But this was the last motion I did basically um, outlying that um, there's another camera. Um, you know, she, she says, <clears throat> Ms. Hayes, this is not the video I saw. I did not see this video.
This is all her telling me about another video and camera. When she says that she's referring to this video? Yeah. Okay. That was the one she was watching with me. So this is supposed to be when the alleged offense occurred. Now, um, let me go ahead and show you that article. I had to take from, let me see if I can get them on here. Um, I think that your name comes up probably around here. Um, I think on this article here. Um, so it says, oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, we don't have internet at the house. Uh, we haven't had internet for how long, you? <laughs> it's been long. I think it's been long. We had it at we had it at the job at the work at the business. So basically, it says that I had two prior arrests in Polk County for drug-related charges, according to you, but that's not true. I have no drug ar arrests in Polk County, and I have no drug convictions in anywhere. I would have, I mean, we, we would get that information from the jail. I mean, it's, it's very, I'll look that up again. I mean, if I got that wrong, I apologize. But I mean, I, I do my due diligence. Um, do, do you have any prior arrests in Polk County? I have an arrest for resisting arrest I was on probation for. I was given a sermon at the Polk State College, okay. and I was picked up on in August of 2018. Um, I was given trespass and resistant arrest. They offered me five days in jail, but they made up uh, some nasty stuff about me saying I was preaching about ISIS and hating women. I decided to go to trial. It ended up in a second jury trial, and they ended up giving me 12 months probation with a condition of 180 days in county jail. and. Um, I ended up being on probation for 12 months, paid the fines and paid maximum fines and court costs. I paid them up front. Um, they, she didn't give me early termination, and it was one month before I was set to be released when this thing came about. Three weeks before this, mm -hmm. the police surrounded our house and tried to, uh, they broke into our house, right, Em? This would have been Winter Haven? Winter Haven and Sheriff's Office on June 7th. This was July 1st. June 7th, um, they threatened to arrest my wife for recording her inside the house and tried to open the door right now. Go ahead and tell them. Yes. Tell them you remember. They, they said that I would be arrested for recording them. I just felt like there was a stranger in our house, so I decided to record. And they were, I felt threatened. How many police were there? To me, I feel like there was still 20 police. There was a lot of police there, and that was three weeks before this this so-called accusation. You can see that our address was posted as a part of this article. Yeah, well, your address, I mean, it is a public record. Well, I just don't remember seeing any um, news articles about somebody being arrested and having their address posted on there. I, I just don't remember ever seeing that before. Maybe that's something that happens quite often now. Yeah, I mean, I was a reporter before I did this. And mm -hmm. Yeah, we... We, we would post addresses. Sometimes we would use it to say, you know, so-and-so of this address is arrested, but in a case where, like, I mean, you were actually arrested at the home. We just gave the address of where it was arrested to let people know where this occurred. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
it's possible the drug charges came from so let me so here's kind of how the process works I mean we this is an affidavit that you have we, before these come out they give briefing reports which are oftentimes the same all the information that I put out comes from the briefing reports from the detectives sergeants whoever works a particular case and it is before it goes out it is looked over it is verified by someone in our administration and then it is sent out so that's the process of who would do the verification I mean it's it's usually a joint effort like say in this case detective on Brewster worked it it would usually be her probably her sergeant who's over detectives at the time it was Sean Nobry. He was still. He's no longer here. And what he about Ambrose? Is she here? She is also. Do you person. know why? I do not. And I'm not sure if she's even working in law enforcement. But I, I mean, she's a secretary of uh, the Fraternal Order of Police, Paint City Lodge, uh, number 187 or something like that. Okay. She, I, I mean, she was disgruntled, I believe, when she left. But I don't know the particulars of why. Hmm. But it's been within. I would, I would guess within the last six months since she left the agency. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we look over it as a team before it's sent out. And I mean, all the information that was sent out would have been verified. I, I mean, this may have came, your final arrest may have came from the, the jail. It may have been in the briefing report. Um, you know, usually when briefing reports are sent out, they have the suspect's past criminal history. Maybe there were charges in there I mean I, I can't recall specifically where well the, the now ex detective that listed a prior drug charge with a case number attached to it okay. and I don't have any prior drug charge I mean I, I, I my wife and I were picked up in 2013 protesting with the Immokalee workers uh, we were put in the ledger um, you know a long Thing. we ended up you know uh, getting on felony probation and stuff they came up on me <coughs> on the cover sting and um, at in front of our, our place of business and told me can we search your vehicle I said no because my lawyer said that's the fourth amendment section or whatever they ended up arresting me they found one joint on me and um, they dropped that okay. so I ended up getting charge for not consent to the search okay. but they had dropped that yeah so I'm not sure why you I know mean, that's the only thing I, I mean, can tell that you may have came up I mean if you were arrested on that charge and well, charge well she says dropped. arrested okay. in her report if I'm not mistaken she puts the word arrested she doesn't say convicted okay. but in yeah. there two prior oh it says that's arrested that. Uh -huh. Yeah, arrest and convictions. Mm -hmm. so it could be different, but... Yeah. Well, um, I, I just, I'm trying to find out why somebody would um, put a newspaper article about me and say that they see me do something on camera when it didn't happen. I mean... How does that work? And, and there was never an accusation. In other words, she says somebody said they saw me commit a crime, but nobody said that. They never saw me sit. Then she, the lady, Miss Kendry Hill, is not saying that she saw me film up another girl's skirt. That did not happen. And um, I, I just, I, you know, they take something of no accusation, and and then they um, place on top of it. Um, just a fabrication of, 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 of claiming to see something that didn't happen. Because, I, I mean, I would have to... Now, you could read that up and down, but it's all lies, you know. Um, it, it <laughs> and then you only missed the Bread Isle photo, or the Bread Isle video you showed me. Yeah. Time.
I mean, this is the. Hill, um, it, it appears Hill just reading this. It appears Mrs. Hill is making the accusation. Or Shannon, Claire, Uncle Hill. Hill is Hill is the mother of the alleged victim. Okay. So this was the sec. This was the um, deposition I gave with her. Did you see the film and film up your daughter's dress? No. Did you see the film and film up anyone's dress? I saw a film of filming a young teenage female. Was she wearing a dress? No. Leggings and a shirt with a mother in the bread aisle. And you were sitting there crouched with a camera, no shopping, no car. Um, how do you think she was? She says probably 12, but she did start out saying teenager. When Armbruster sat down with her, her first thing she said was nine. So I like to at this point identify this girl you know to find out how old she is mm -hmm. who she is and um, it would be uh, highly suspected that um, Aunt Brewster would have visited this girl and identified her and if she had visited her and attempted to get her to get involved in and the girl that her mother refused, then that would have granted permission for the defendant if anything were to have happened. So I'm working on a new motion to do with identifying this girl. But um, I don't know if there's anything maybe you could like help me to, to, to find out who this girl is. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I if, if I can or not because I mean juveniles are obviously protected. I know the case involves you, and you know you obviously have a, a reason to want to identify this this girl because this is essentially your accuser mm -hmm. in this case. Well, you say juveniles protected, but um. I mean, they 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 are they're out. Uh, Bruce decided to 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 go out about around the town and and run her mouth. So, um, I I, I think that they're able to identify um, people. Um, I, I don't think this girl's a juvenile. That's the okay. point. Mm -hmm. And Kendria Hill, she thinks she may have saw something, but she's exaggerating. And I, because they're giving me a little pixel. Um, Surveillance, it's hard. I mean, I can't use facial recognition if I had the means of doing so. And they're, um, they've subpoenaed okay. for all the surveillance from one to three, but I've only obtained two. Uh, okay. One of them with her and her daughter walking by the camera, and then another one that you just saw. Okay, so I'm trying to <coughs> get this. Yes, sir. It, it appears in here that we're identifying Jenry Hill, or Jim, how, how yeah. do you say, as the victim, and then after further digging into this, the mother actually claims someone else is the victim instead of her daughter. Well, it's not really further digging into this. I mean, that was the initial interview from the beginning. From the beginning, right. Okay. And Sharon Hayes gave an interview as well. Um, those are the two interviews, the two tape statements. Um, you know, the, it, it, if her daughter's brought into it in the interview, it's it's like her mother saying that, you know, her, she was afraid that her daughter, but it, it's just that it's like if I sit here and say, you know, hey, Mike Ferguson, um, I, you know, he, you know, maybe he could do something. I mean, that's not something of evidence because I've made that statement. That yeah. Somebody comes in here and boom, you got a SWAT team on you. And that's basically what she said. You know, I, I've got my daughter with me, and I, you know, I, I heard something on the news about kidnappings in Florida, and um, I guess that was that was it. You know, with her daughter, it it has to do with this Hispanic um, young female, whatever, categorized curly hair, gray leggings, and a okay. shirt. Uh, I, I, I understand. Her daughter's not even around. I mean, you were the victim in this case, the mother is not even claiming that her daughter's the victim. No, she never did. She, 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 she straight out says in right. the first interview she did not see me around her daughter with the camera. No. That's, that's her statement about that. And has, so you're, you're currently fighting this in court, is that the yeah. case you haven't, the charges haven't stuck or dropped one way or the other? No. Okay.
Nothing's dropped. Nobody's out for me anything. Nothing. It's just me just yeah. fighting it every day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if if you're not guilty of what you're accused, Mr. Jonathan, I really do. Feel I, 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 I understand. And um, and if if I got this wrong, I apologize. For that, I'm, I'll look when we get back. Um, when I get back to my office, and I'll try to figure out where I got that from. I mean, everything else that was released in the story and in, in, in this affidavit report comes from the detectives. And I mean, I'm, I, I really, I don't know. I don't know what, what I can do to help you. Do I mean, you know the? I would know what. Do you know the uh, the, uh, the 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 author of this of this publication, Kathy Lee? Kathy Lee works with. I do. She's no longer with the paper. She's actually now the sheriff's office. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm aware of that actually. Community outreach of some sort. Oh. She's not a cop. But yeah. Um. Is she somebody that kind of works like you, do you think, where they just provided with information and that that's what they go off of? Well, she was a reporter at this point. Yeah. I mean, reporter, and, and that's what I did before I came here. So they, when you write a story involving a crime, all the information basically comes from the law enforcement agency that puts out the information. We did put out a release, a press release on this, mm -hmm. and that's where the information came from. Uh, when you mean this press release, what do you mean that was something internal? No, no, press releases, they, uh, they're, they're basically summaries. It's, it's kind of a, a, a condensed version of this with the key points and, you know, who's accused of what, what he's charged with, where he was arrested, and, you know, the sequence of what he's accused. And if you give me your email, I'll even send you the release we sent out. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't have an email right now, but I can provide one for you. Um, is that something that uh, you you make up? Where does that who where does that come from? The press release. I mean, it's written from a report. Yes. Um, who wrote it? Do you know? Who In this it? case. The release. Yeah. It was me. Uh huh. And before it is sent out, it is looked over by the detectives who work the case in the administration, usually chief and deputy. And they get the approval, and it is sent. And then where does it go? Media outlet, Brooklyn Media outlet. Uh huh. Do you remember who contacted you about this, and like, to get that started? I mean, we send it out, and sometimes we get follow-up questions about what's in there. Sometimes they just look at the press release, and that's what they write a story about. Sometimes they'll call and get a quote. Um, sometimes a press a quote is provided. Right, what um just so that's not something that happens with every arrest not every arrest I mean press releases are sent for um, I mean, like a big case like like a murder is going to get a press release uh, and sometimes it's you know things we think uh, news outlets will find interesting. Like, for example, we had a guy steal a bulldozer and started running over a uh, Joe Biden campaign sign. Mm -hmm. That got a press release. We had a guy hit. You're looking for attention. And you put out something that says a man tries to film underneath a nine year old, that's something that gets attention. It does get attention. We're putting out things that we feel are interested and of interest to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just because like the average person doesn't have those powers, you know, to distribute the content. Oh, I'm aware, and I mean. So it's hard to uh, defend yeah. yourself if when people are making up lies and using the media outlet. I mean, I'm not making up. I, I don't know. I can't speak for anyone else. I'm. I was going with the information that was provided. Yeah, I get that. Um, You're a face, you know, for the for the out for the uh, 
for the agency. But I mean, that's that's something that you chose. Yeah. Let's see. It's not something I chose. For my wife. I I understand, and I I just like. And I, I know maybe I'm falling on deaf ears now, but I, I honest when we send out releases, I, I look up people beforehand. I like to know who faced the blast thing. I mean, I really do take that responsibility. Um, I understand that's a that's an awesome responsibility to be able to. So who? What did you? I mean, did you, did you look me up? Did you think I was blastworthy? I mean, I'm not trying to blast anyone. Um, I, I don't recall. I mean, it's been two years. I, I don't. Re I, I may have looked up the drug-related charges on the county website. I'm. I mean, it's, it's been so long. I, I don't recall what exactly. I looked into beforehand. But How many of these do you do, do you think, annually? It, it varies. I mean, it, it's, we'll go, sometimes we'll go weeks without putting anything out. I put out a quarterly report, um, and the quarter, which I'm working on, the end of the quarter, is today, and we put, I put out 25 this past quarter. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for that. Can you uh, maybe line me up with an interview with the chief? I can ask. Um, is there a, what's a good just contact information for you? Um, you can call me at 258-7752, area code 863. It's not my number though. I can request, I can let him know. Maybe he can give you a call, and maybe he can set it up. I'm, I'm, but I, I can't guarantee anything. Yeah, I know. The, I mean, like I said, if if I got my portion wrong on your drug related charges, I truly am sorry. And if you're accused of something you truly did not do, I I, I really I honestly feel for you. But I, I mean, I can't speak to <coughs> for anyone else's work in the investigation. Mm -hmm. I believe our detectives do a thorough job. I, I think they're good at what they do. I mean, they're people like anyone else, and people have run the mistakes. I'm not saying they did or didn't in this case. But I mean, I, I I wish I could do. I don't know what else I can do for you. I can ask uh, if the chief would be interested in giving you a call. Maybe you can interview. Maybe you can have a meeting with him. Yeah, he's, I don't, yeah, well, I mean, I'm willing to, I, I depoed him and he didn't appear, so, anytime he'd like to sit down at his convenience, I'm willing to come. Okay, and you guys are still in Winterhaven? Yeah, we're still at the same address, uh, neighbors love us, and um, who knows, maybe this is the thing that will keep us here, although we'd like to go at this point, would we like to get out of here, very much? Oh, that's how she feels. Afghanistan? That's what it's come down to. You know, I guess, I guess they got so much power, they can just go around and make up lies. But there has to be something to come out of it. You know, now we read the scripture, and we learn that the truth, the truth comes. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Carry that in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Yes, sir. You have yourself a great day. Bless you.